Hello everyone and welcome to Tell It to the World's Month in Review, where we talk to you about the big events that have taken place in the month and tie them into Bible prophecy. My name is Jerby. My name is Jared. And I'm Richard. But before we begin, let's open up with a word of prayer, shall we friends? Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your many blessings. We thank you for this opportunity where we can come, Lord, and share events transpiring all around us showing how Bible prophecy is fast fulfilling. Open up our eyes that we may see the signs of the times. Is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's get right into it and look at the screen at Luke 21 and verse number 9. It says this, But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, remember those two things, mm -hmm. be not terrified, Jesus says, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. And friends, the question I want to pose is, do we see civil unrest taking place among the nations? Do we see wars and even commotions taking mm -hmm. place? Yes, Just do. this month, we saw on the screen, in France, this is what was taking place and is still taking place. France in lockdown mode ahead of new yellow jacket protests. So the people in France, the working class, they are rioting, rising up against the high taxes in order to combat the effects of climate change and the people are unhappy. Mm. Commotions mm. are taking place. Mm. That Commotions. Is true. And friends, while Europe um, is in riots because of the high taxes that are hurting families mm. financially all over France, experts are saying that America is headed for another mm. recession, even worse than that of 2008. Mm. Look on the screen right here. This is from the same news outlet, Politico, and it says Trump advisors fear 2020 nightmare. Hmm. And it says a recession is coming. This hmm. is what experts are saying in, here in America, that it's going to be worse than 2008, worse than even 1929. Hmm. And this is right around the corner because this year is over. Right. So this is next year they're saying it's going to come to that pass. That is true. Financial crisis. And not only is there a lot of talk going on about a financial recession, but there's also a lot of talk about our freedoms of speech mm. being restricted. Take mm -hmm. a look at this article here from CNS News. It says, Apple CEO Tim Cook not banning those who violate our morality is a sin. Mm. And for me to actually catch a grasp of what this is trying to say, I put a different word. I put failure to ban those who violate our morality is a sin. Now, let's see a little bit more in this next slide. It says, Apple CEO Tim Cook, who is openly gay and supported Hillary Clinton in 2016, defended the banning of certain speech and news media on Apple platforms when they violate the values of the company. He added that to not ban what is wrong is irresponsible and a sin. Hmm, strong words. Ab very strong words. Oh. Apple leader Cook did not define what he termed those who seek to push hate, division, and violence, leaving the door open for a wide swath of future censorship and banning of ideas and voices that who doesn't like, that Cook doesn't like. Mm. So it's saying that, he's saying that it's irresponsible and it's a sin. But last time I checked in the book of First John, it does say that the um, sin, sin, sin is, trans is the transgression Christian. of God's law, yes. not Tim Cook's law. And what's even more interesting is you can see um, some of the things that he is advocating in this um, article right here because he's openly gay. And so what, what the implication is that if you are talking against the sins of the LGBT community mm -hmm. and other such groups that the Bible um, condemns, the sin, not the people, right? That yeah. the Bible condemns the sin, then you will be banned. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the opposite is true based on what we just read. Mm -hmm. If you openly advocate for these groups, we're not going to ban you. You have free reign to say whatever you want. And what we see is Isaiah 5 taking place, mm. that they will call evil good, good and good evil. evil. Right. And, and on that point, we see here the um, uh, freedom of speech being trampled underfoot because we're told in GC that America will what? Repudiate every principle, every principle of its constitution. constitution. So we, we see here that if we don't go along with some of the mandates of what they call sin, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to take away our freedoms, mm -hmm. even freedom of speech. And on the next article we want to share with you, friends, we're going to see uh, congressmen wanting to regulate free mm -hmm. speech. Freedom look at this speech. Look at this headline here. 
from Fox News. It says here, California Democrat Ted Lieu says he would love to regulate what? Speech. Mm. But what? He says that the U.S. Constitu Constitution sorry, prohibits him from doing that. Hmm. What are these men calling for? Look at the next screen here. It says, this is his words, I would love to be able to regulate the content of speech. Mm. He, he, said, he makes one statement here, but read on. Lou said Wednesday on CNN, the First Amendment prevents me from doing so. However, listen what he says next, and that's simply a function of the First Amendment. But I think, Lou, over the long run, it's better that government does not regulate the content of speech. So on mm. one hand, he says, I would love to regulate it, but in the other, he says, government should not regulate in the long run. That's double speaking. Double yeah. speaking, right? Mm -hmm. So we see here, friends, a trampling on our constitutional rights. And that it's coming true. soon. Our First Amendment rights, as well as um, some of the other rights granted to us in the Constitution, right. they are going to be repudiated. Exactly. Mm. And if you are seeing the things that are taking place in the world as of now, and you're wanting to find that perfect country property, and also trying to move towards the guidelines of properly educating your child by homeschooling, you want to take a look at this next article here. Mm -hmm. Take a look at LifeSite. It says, Virginia County wants to nix law allowing homeschooling for religious reasons Interesting. now isn't that crazy the mm. enemy is really trying to harm the yeah. parents that are trying to educate their children God's way and we see that there are laws being put in place just to stop just that it's true and the enemy has different hooks to catch different people exactly. and another one of his deceptions his hooks is spiritualism mm -hmm. the belief that the dead can speak to us mm. listen to what president trump said just this month business insider that's the way they want it trump said while pointing up the headline continues trump claims dead u.s troops would have agreed with him to pull out of syria let's see what trump really says it says trump went on to speak for the dead troops this is what he says mm -hmm. and i'll tell you they're up there looking down on us. Mm. And there is nobody happier or more proud of their families to put them in a position where they've done such good for so many people, Trump said. So our boys, our young women, our men, they're all coming back. And that's the way we want it. And that's the way they want it, Trump added, pointing a finger at the sky. Mm. Trump was saying that Dead soldiers want U.S. troops who are living to come back home to America. Now, yeah. is, is, is that truth or is it a lie? Are, are these dead men Error. speaking to, to Error. Trump? Error. Error, friend. This is our president now, mm -hmm. right? This is not the vice president. This is not the secretary of state. Trump is claiming dead soldiers are speaking to him, and he's the leader of America, the and, nation. But what does the Bible say on this point? Can the, <laughs> the dead, dead really speak to us? The dead are they dead, friends. Nothing. They know nothing underneath the sun. They have nothing to do with anything underneath the sun. And mm. this is why the book Great Controversy needs to be shared, because there's yes. a, a chapter in the book that says, can our dead talk to us? Mm. Can they speak to us? And that chapter will clearly speak on that. Mm. Now we're going to switch gears for a bit here, and we're going to switch topics. And now we're talking about the topic of diet. Mm. And if you have yet to figure and find that getting rid of flesh foods is the right way here we will show you this look at this next headline from abc news it says tennessee man diagnosed with human form of mad cow disease what you should know about kreutzfeldt jakob disease mm. now basically if we take a look at the next slide we'll find out more it says tony gibson 32 began experiencing symptoms of the rare neurological condition Kreutzfeldt Jakob disease about a year ago. He became he became very forgetful and would get lost in the grocery stores and even in his own home. <laughs> his wife, Danielle Gibson, told ABC News affiliate. The majority of CJD cases are spontaneous and show no specific source of transmission. Additionally, fewer than 1% of cases are acquired from exposure to brain or nervous system tissue, such as from a medical procedure or from containment, contaminated, contaminated meat. meat. Mm. Now that is just mind-blowing to me. We're told that in these last days, we have to leave the flesh foods, foods alone. Why? Because right. these animals, the cows, 
they'll become more diseased, mm -hmm. right? The chicken, and I, the and fish, all of that, everything. And as, and as we're eating that, we are now becoming diseased, yeah. right? Yep. And we're dying before our time. Mm -hmm. and, and don't be fooled by this article, how they try to downplay it and say only fewer than 1% mm -hmm. you know, contract this by medical procedure mm -hmm. or contaminated meat. This is just one of many we could show you. But right. the point is meat, flesh foods are killing us and causing these diseases. Mm. It's time to go on God's original plant-based plant diet. diet. Yeah. Now friends, as we look at this last headline, the point that I want to emphasize is this. Christ's second coming is imminent. Mm. And we have to examine ourselves and be ready for it at any moment. Because at any moment, if we are found unready, that could be it. Our probation will close. Let's look at this headline. It says, The Guardian. Indonesia, tsunami caused by collapse of a volcano. So there was a volcano that caused a tsunami in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to show you next is very sad. Friends, we're going to show you a clip. And as you watch it, weep. Because these individuals who were here at a concert were unaware hmm. that it was, gonna, it was going to be. That a flood was coming, right? Yeah. A flood was coming. Yeah, no. It was the, some of their last moments here on Earth. Let's take a look. Friends, mm. that is so sad. And what we could see from that video, this is a pop concert. People are partying, drinking, eating. And it reminds me of this scripture. They died. Many of them died. Mm. Their last moments on earth. Where were their thoughts? Mm. Notice what Matthew 24, verse 38 and 39 says. Verse 39 says, well, verse 38 mentions Noah and how they were eating and drinking and marrying and so on. Right? Verse 39, listen to what it says. And knew not until the flood came mm. and took them all away. Right. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's, mm. so, that's so potent. Because as we see that, that particular event happen, they knew not when the flood came, they right? Didn't. And so shall the Son of Man come. Right, so where were they thought? We're not, we're not judging them, mm. right? So, we but we have, to have to, we have to have to ask the question, where were their thoughts before this flood came, right? Where, what was their, their mindset centered on? Mm. Was it on Christ, right? Their probation closed, friends. Closed. That's closed. True. So we have to, we have to examine, and examine ourselves. Mm -hmm. where, are, where are our thoughts? Where are our thoughts? Is your life hid with Christ in God? Mm. Hmm. Friends, this is the end of 2018, if God should allow us to live to 2019, will our life be the same as it was in this past year, hmm. living the life of sin, or will we have a new life in Christ? Hmm. So the question is, are we getting ready, and are we getting others ready for the soon coming of Christ? Because as we, all, we see all these current events happening more frequently, yep. right? Hmm. Are we evangelizing the world? Are we sharing this gospel? And on that note, friends, we want you to share with us your testimony of how you've been spreading the gospel yes. in your neighborhoods, in your communities, family, and friends, and share with us um, these testimonies. And of course, we have our email there at tittw at save to serve ministry.com. So share with us your testimony. And in that comment box below, we want you to share your testimony as well, mm -hmm. right? Share with us how you've been um, furthering uh, this gospel. And on that note, uh, we'd just like to thank you again for staying tuned to another episode of Month in Review.